My most vivid memory of the day after is, is the fact that the last, I think it was 45 minutes, ran without commercials. Yeah, one, one of the problems we had, um, not dissimilar from the Roots thing we were talking about, was the day after um, is about blowing people up and, and horrible, disgusting scenes, and um, it's not exactly a perfect advertising climate for Pepsi-Cola. And um, so it was, the advertising was very restricted um, to uh, places where it would be either before the bomb and nice domestic scenes or something like where it was comfortable and you could do a Pepsi commercial. But um, uh, there were times when, there, when we just couldn't, couldn't, couldn't interrupt it. Um, but we had advertiser problems uh, way beyond the content of the show. Um, we had advertiser problems because they were terrified to be in the show because the show became so extraordinarily controversial. Um, it's very hard to understand now what that period was like when that show came on the air. But I can tell you this only because I've been emptying out some of my boxes um, at my office, which have been sitting there for nine years. I've got to do something. I've got to get rid of them. And I ran across this little thing in the day after, which said that at the time when it was on the air, there was a survey done, and 53% of the people thought that the President Reagan was, would take us to nuclear war, and 75% of the US people in the United States thought there would be nuclear war within the next 10 years. So that gives you some feeling of what the tenor of the, of the, of the country at the time. They were scared, very, very, very scared, and understandably. Um, at the same time, I was interested in doing this because I really felt that what had happened since, since Tom, John Hersey's book, Hiroshima, which I don't know if you ever read, fabulous book, was the fear had really um, paralyzed people. They'd taken the fear and shoved it back on a shelf in the back of their minds because they simply didn't want to deal, didn't, have, didn't want to worry about it. I'm talking about not political people, but ordinary audiences. So the intent of the day after was to bring this forward and make them talk about it, make them think about it, and make them decide for themselves what they were going to do about it. That's what the intent of the day after was. Well, I'm not a political person. I'm not remotely a political person. I'm some apolitical. It's a little embarrassing. So I was caught completely off guard by what was going to happen to the right and their reactions and what the left reactions were going to be. The left thought it was the greatest thing that ever happened in the history of the world. And they walked around have, holding candles and looking moon at the sky and singing hymns. And they just thought it was wonderful. And if I ran into somebody on an airplane, they would come up and drop to their knees and say, oh, you're the most wonderful person ever even to save the world. And that was as wacky as the right who was saying, we're going to enjoin the network, we're going to stop you from doing this, we are going to go after the advertisers, we are going to do blockades. They came unbelievably strong in doing everything they could to stop it from going on the air. The sales department didn't want it to go on the air because of the obvious problems with advertisers. The um, affiliates didn't want to go on the air because they were getting huge local pressure about it politically. The legal department at ABC didn't want to go on the air because it was going to annoy the hell out of Washington, which it obviously did. And we'll, we know, talk about that some more. And so they were very unhappy with it. The program par department at ABC didn't want to go on the air because it wasn't going to get any ratings and we were going to lose an enormous amount of money because of no adver advertiser support. So there was Brandon. <laughs> and there was, fortunately, Leonard Goldenson. And Leonard Goldenson was chairman of ABC, and he said, we're going to get this on the air. But there were all sorts of attempts. It, it, let me just <coughs> talk about some of the things that the fear that was going on about this show. People were, there were stories on the front page of the New York Times about psychiatrists saying, they, we have to clear our decks because the suicide rate is going to go up on Monday morning and on Tuesday. So we're clearing the decks and I have to meet with people. Front page of the New York Times. Front page of the New York Times. Children can't watch this show. School system saying no one under 10 can watch it. No one over 12 can watch it. No one under 16 can watch it. It was panic everywhere. 
Phyllis Schafly coming after us, the um, Jerry Falwell. I was on 60 Minutes with Jerry Falwell. I'm defending the show on 60 Minutes. Jerry Falwell is attacking. It, it was unbelievable in terms of the amount of controversy that happened. The day we went on, on the air, the New York Times ran four stories. The entire um, uh, op-ed page was about the day after. Two stories on the front page and one on the, on the, the uh, television page. It was that much. The ink was unbelievable. There were stories saying ABC's doing the work of Yuri on, do on drop off. Um, it, it was beyond anything I have ever seen or ever known in my life. It was so big that I started to get physically sick. And, I, and, I, and I'm just a guy who's doing a movie here. And it's, and I'm doing, inter I was doing interviews every 14 seconds. I finally got wide enough, uh, smart enough to say, you get two questions, that's it. You're, and then I'm out of here. The last night, before, Friday night before we were going on air, um, uh, I get a call from ABC, which is news, which is kind of new for me because no one at ABC had talked to me for a month. No one in that company had talked to me. Everybody ran from me so far, I couldn't get, hey, how you doing, Charlie? Oh, okay, see you later. I mean, just no one would talk to me. The management didn't talk to me. The, my staff didn't talk to me. I was totally isolated. It was a very weird feeling. I get this phone call from ABC News on a Friday night, and I said, listen, we, we, signed, we know you're going on Sunday night, and, and, and Koppel calls and says, you gotta, you gotta do a nightline, and I, I know, Ted, I'm not gonna do a nightline. And it's world news tonight. It, it, you're our guy. We just want to ask you three questions, and um, that's it. And I said, okay, we'll do three questions. Friday night, I'm on my way out. They, I go down to my, outside my office. We'll set up like this. The guy asked me first question, fine. Second question, fine. Third question is, did you receive today instructions from the White House to make edits in the day after? And we had. And I looked at this guy and I knew the, it leaked at ABC. And I said, no comment. <laughs> and then walked out of the room. And the White House said, had issued instructions to ABC to say, we want the following edits. And they called me in the West Coast. This is Friday night before we air on Sunday. And I said, tell them to fuck off. We're not touching the film. Um, but it was that bad. It was... Um, I had death threats up at my house, people coming to the door. I would be a piece of paper on my car and I'd pick it up and they would say, this could have been a bomb. Um, it's hard to imagine now the degree to which that show stirred up people's fears. It, it, you, as you probably remember, it was followed by um, a viewpoint NBC, given by ABC News after the show was on the air. And George Schultz opened it up, his Secretary of State, and he talked about the um, uh, administration's position on, on nuclear disarmament, what they were doing, what they felt, what they felt about it. And he was very uncomfortable and not a happy camper to be put in this position. And then it was followed up by Kissinger and, uh, and uh, Bill Buckley, et cetera, the big panel that went on for an hour discussing the, the issue. What did the White House want changed? Um, there was the, if I remember correctly, and I'm not sure I do, but um, there was only two or three lines. But the day after, the story was done in a certain way, so as you didn't know who, pulled, who went first, who pulled the trigger first, who sent the first bomb. Mm -hmm. There was escalation, 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 but you never knew, did Russia do it first or did America do it first? And if I remember correctly, those lines were just a couple of little lines would have shaded it to the Russians to went first, which would have changed the entire film. The film had nothing to do with about who, who pulled the trigger first. It was about, here's what happens with nuclear bombs. And no way, Jose, was I going to do that. No way. 